Okay, so I think this is on and it's recording, so that's cool. Um, I wanted to go through my process for this latest piece, which at the time I'm recording this, I haven't actually named it, and I'm actually kind of nervous to talk about this. I've never talked to like anyone about my process because I didn't think anyone cared to listen. So thank you for listening. <laughs> um, so right now, I don't actually know what that piece is called yet. In my process, I kind of come up with the name a little bit afterwards. Um, right now it's called Window, so that's why you kind of see all these files named after that. Um, uh, so when I'm coming up with a concept, I like to start out with these little thumbnails. And sometimes these thumbnails are based off of a word list because I find some inspiration off of just words like window. Well, what could be happening at this window? Is it a, a window out into like a space station? Is it a window out into like a courtyard? Like, you know, and a lot of my pieces tell stories. And so coming up with words in a list of words is usually a great place for me to start. And so once I get to that, I move on to these thumbnails. So <laughs> it's kind of like a little sneak peek into uh, <laughs> what I'm currently working on. Um, and because I have like a day job, I can't usually, I like to jot things down because it'll just like leave my mind and I will be very upset about it later. So sometimes what I'll do is I will just open up a blank canvas and I'll start out with these thumbnails and they usually don't have color. They usually start out really like small and um, I'm so nervous, I don't know why I'm talking to no one really. Um, uh, and so they start out small and they're scribbly and really the whole point of them is to kind of get a feel for the composition before you jump in and you make this huge piece and you spend a long time on it like oh my god you guys like i spend so much time working on some of these pieces because of my day job it it takes up my entire week i come home i'm exhausted i don't want to paint anymore let's be honest like i did it for eight hours straight why would i want to do it more some people they have that drive in them i have never had that drive so i sometimes will do these thumbnails and i'll keep them in a place where i can come back to them and when I'm, I'm creatively just really just want to paint something or I really want to sketch something. And um, so yeah, so this is the current piece right here is her thumbnail. And I was basing this off of a previous piece about a witch. And when I first came up with this idea, I really wanted to draw a witch. And <laughs> by the time I got to it, I was really done with drawing witches. So, <laughs> so at the time I wanted to draw a witch. Um, and so I wanted to do one with inside, and this is actually before quarantine, so that's great. Um, way, way back in January, actually. So, um, so yeah, so this is the thumbnail. And so then when I come up with these thumbnails, I come up with a really quick, what would the lighting look like? What, what do I like about the lighting? And, um, and then I will take it into the second thumbnail form. So this is the color thumbnails. And I, I think with this, I actually did sketch it. But typically, I will just take the, the ugly thumbnail sketch and I'll put that in so I know where um, values lie. But I you want to keep that layer off because at the end of the day, like you want to see how things are being separated in your composition. You want to see how um, how easy it is to see the figure, and if your colors are uh, breaking pieces apart. So, like with this, I wanted to come up with three different color techniques or lighting scenarios. Um, I actually came up with the lighting scenarios, and I didn't like a lot of them. I, I wanted the, the light to come from the window in some way. So then I moved on to the colors. So these are my different colors, and each color to me feels like it has a different mood. Color is um, very important when doing your story and setting your scene. So with this, I was like, all right, 
So I have an idea of what I want, but let me try something that is kind of more out of the box and not what I was thinking about. And so that's where this blue piece one came from. So let's run through this. So the first one here is um, on the left is more of like a sunset kind of vibe. And it kind of gives you this feeling that like, like the sun's going down and maybe she's kind of more wistful, I guess. And to me, it was way pink. Like I was, I love pink and I love yellow, but I was just like, there's just too much of just two colors here. So I wasn't a huge fan of this. Um, and so then moving on to the middle piece, I was like, all right, well, I didn't really exactly want it to be sunset and wistful. I wanted it to feel like she's kind of cozy in her house, just having some fun and reading a book in front of a window so that's where this one kind of came up with and I'm using cooler colors to kind of surround her so that we kind of get this feeling of like she's where the warm light is inside her room and it's just a relaxing and peaceful wistful day and so then with this last one on the right the blue one I was like number one I looked through my portfolio <laughs> And I noticed I used a lot of purple and a lot of yellow in my current pieces. And I was like, oh, geez, I got to be, I got to challenge myself in some way, you know. And so I was like, all right, so what would happen if it was at night and it was blue and, and it was dark and all the light just came from her book instead? Like maybe it's a magical book. And so see how the narrative all of a sudden from the one in the middle where it's just a wistful, normal day. She's doing normal things just like you or me. And it just feels peaceful and calm. Whereas the one on the right is all of a sudden we, we inject this much more whimsical fantasy kind of narrative into it. And we're, we're using these sparkles and we're illuminating light. And it's like, oh, she's casting a spell. or She's reading a magical book. And so that could be fun too. And I actually almost went this direction. And I was like to a coworker, I was like, so what do you think about this? And he kind of liked the one in the middle. And I wasn't a huge fan of the one in the middle just because, to me, I do like the purples and the yellows, but I also feel like there's a lot of, um, like, gray tones. So it felt a little muddy for me. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's just because my casino mind has, like, warped things to where everything must be saturated to as saturated as it can be. But I was just kind of not totally feeling it but kind of on board and and as much as I wanted to do the nighttime scene I also felt like years ago that's what I would go with like I would go with this one uh one area of lighting that illuminates just this one thing everything's super dark and then I was like well it just I might revisit this but in a different way like I do I do want to come back to something that's more whimsical but when I set out for this piece and what I wanted for it was just a very calm tranquil narrative so I was like all right I'm gonna go with this metal one and it turns out like it ended up being a combination I think of the middle and the one on the left that's actually really pink so just because I don't know, it just felt like I didn't quite stick to my narrative like I should have. Um, but that's okay, you know, that's what art's about. Sometimes you kind of you kind of reattach yourself to the piece. It takes you off somewhere else. So, and you, you got to be willing to let it do that. Sometimes you just got to let the art do its thing. Um, so, let's see. So, we got this piece, and this is a finished piece. So, I wanted to talk a little bit through the steps. Okay, so as you notice, I have a shit ton of layers. I don't care if I curse, whatever. Um, and like for me, I just use them a lot. I don't, I don't recommend it to anyone because I don't know. I just feel like there are more efficient ways to do it rather than I do it. But this is how I've always done it. And with my job, uh, there's a lot of having to go back and fix things and change the color of this, change the color of that. And so I've just, it's just become this thing where I feel more anxious if I don't have a bunch of layers. And 
the way I have it now is I only get to work on these on the weekend um, for about four or five hours. And so what I'll do is I will work on uh, the piece and then I will group all of those layers into one spot. And so all of these groups are as many weeks as it's taken me and as many sit downs as it's taken me to finish this piece. Like, y'all don't understand. Like, by the time I'm halfway through, I have this, I always have this feeling that I want to give up and <laughs> that I don't know what's going on in this piece. I don't know why I want to make this piece. And um, I'll talk about that a bit more at the end because to me, that's like a, that's always the, the part that is the most difficult to get through. I find the most fun is to work in this uh, thumbnail page like phase. I love this. I love concepting things. I don't like sketching as much just because it becomes a bit more technical. Like what is anatomy? What is perspective? Like I have to figure these things out because in some parts it's very um, important to the narrative. Like you can't mess up a foot because then people aren't going to be feeling like all of this lady's emotion here in the corner. They're going to be feeling, oh my god, what, what, what the heck's wrong with her foot? So, like, when it comes to the sketching, um, that part to me can actually be pretty stressful. And my second favorite part is this color, because to me it comes more naturally, I think, and um, it just gives me a way to explore and the, the idea and the feeling and the mood that I wanted for the piece is finally coming to life. Um, so yeah, so then it comes to painting, and <laughs> I I do love painting. This piece was extra stressful because there were so many little bits and pieces, and I just felt this really strange need to just make everything clean. And I think when I did that, it kind of made things a bit more uh, stale, less organic, I guess. But that's okay. I I did like my end result, but get ahead of myself. So, um, so yeah, so I start out with the lines here, and then I actually take my thumbnail, <laughs> I, I don't know if this is smart or not, I don't care, um, I take my thumbnail and that I made over here, and all I did was just blow it up, I just blew it up, so like, I think 400% or something ridiculous, so we have all the colors, and they're all like, all nasty and pixelated, and then, um, I just kind of go over it and I clean up what that looks like. And then the important part is, um, so I want to turn the lines off so I know that it kind of is matching the thumbnail a bit more. As you can see here though, there's a bit more of these darker tones, which, go. I think I added those. yeah, so then I added them afterwards because I was like, hey, wait, this isn't, this isn't doing what I wanted to. Okay, I'm going to just close these so that this, I'll come back to later. Um, but, here we go. So we're not going to do this again. Um, so yeah, so, so I got the thumbnail down. And then um, I find it very important to add a layer <laughs> through all the nonsense of layers. I actually have a group. I have a group that's red and it says on the top and it says delete later and this is where you put all your junk like all the times that you tested stuff out or all the times that oh no uh okay sorry okay so this is where i put all the junk and all the stuff that i um tested out and i didn't like or it didn't work i'll just scoot it up here and in case, like, that's that paranoia part that comes from a job, in case I need it, it is right here. And when you're finished and you feel totally complete with this file, you just come in and you just delete that group and it just cleans out your file. So, um, but yeah, so I actually, underneath that, I will add a separate layer that's just black. And what this does, I put it on color mode. And so then I have a better view of seeing it grayscale. Now I've heard that like it's not 100% showing you. You have to like calibrate certain things. It's a lot of whatever. Uh, this gives you a good enough view of hey, can we see that what what she's doing? Can we see that this cat stands out? You know, like it it shows enough of your values. I think I don't think you have to go 
way into it and get technical. You're just here to paint. Um, and then I keep a line layer. And I'll refer to this kind of often um, when I'm painting so I can kind of get an idea of am I keeping to what my original sketch had. Um, and then I'll also copy bits. Like when I get to her, I will just take the lasso tool in my lines and I'll just lasso this and I'll copy and I'll paste it on top of the painting so that I can. I, I usually like to start with characters from my sketch and like paint on top of them so that it's easier for me to know where the lines are. Um, so, yeah, so, so as you can see, I got the backgrounds and I'm painting and rendering and I'm taking things kind of piece by piece as I do this. And um, I'll play like a little clip at the end that's kind of just each layer <laughs> I have turned on. <laughs> so you can kind of see how I work. I haven't recorded myself painting it just because it makes me nervous. I can't even like talk right now because I'm nervous. So can you imagine me trying to paint? Um, but hopefully like I'll get better at this and I'll get more comfortable. And hopefully this still gives a decent idea. I know it doesn't exactly tell you how I render the wooden floor. Um, but I mean, um, but yeah, so it was interesting in that I was painting this and right about here, I was just pretty done. Like there's a, a point in the painting where like you just feel like it's never going to leave what I like to call the, the ugly phase. <laughs> it's just not going to be what you intended and it just isn't gonna ever end it just feels like you have to keep painting and it's just it gets very overwhelming even if I broke it down into parts and by here I was I probably started this I was working on the butterfly piece um until February and so actually I might have finished that in January and not have posted it until February I like to give myself four weeks to finish a piece because I know that like I just I can't scribble and paint really fast anymore like I I don't know if it's just my preference or I just gotten slower <laughs> probably a bit of both um but I I need those four weeks um to just really work on a piece and this one was double that so I'm talking at the end of April yeah I probably started around March so this is at at this stage was probably the end of March. I've already spent four weeks on this and I just, you know, you get painting fatigue. And, um, and yeah, that's why it's also good to have that thumbnail page and just have a list of words. Cause while you're painting this, you come up with so many other ideas like, oh man, you'll, you'll like browse Instagram and be like, man, I really want to make like, uh, I really want to make Harry Potter fan art. So now I'm just like, I really want to make some Harry Potter fan art. So you just kind of, like keep those things and keep them off to the side so that when you finish this piece and you get through it, cause you'll get through it. Um, and that's important. You gotta, you gotta finish, finish it because you just feel so good when you're done. Um, so yeah, so I, I got to about this part and I was like, all right, let's, let's do this. Let's finish the piece. And so <laughs> I was furloughed for like a week. And so I, I told myself I was going to get this done in two days. Well, I'm right about here and it was, uh, three days and I was just like, wow. Okay. So this, this is done. This is finished, but I wasn't happy with it. And, and I was just, I woke up, I, I went to bed cause I just, there's a point where you can't just finish it in the timeline that you wanted. You, you have to go to bed. You have to clear your mind, you have to think, and um, wake up the next day and kind of see it with fresh eyeballs and see how you feel about it. So I woke up and I was just like, this, this is it. This this is done. And it, it looks close to the thumbnail. I mean, the thumbnail's got a bit more light coming in here, but it's done. Like, why am I not happy and satisfied with this? And so I'm kind of examining it a bit and of course you want to you want to flip come on get this recording going 
a way. You want to flip the canvas as much as possible. Um, yeah, there's things in my way. Um, but you want to flip the canvas as much as possible. And I'm flipping it, and I just feel like, like I don't have any place to focus on, if that makes sense. So we, we're in this room. We got all this stuff. And this is way purple. Like, this is purple just surrounding her. And it's very yellow. And it just, like, this cat stands out more because he's got got way more of let's turn the values on he's got way more of a contrast here with his values and so she's the most important part why am I looking at all this other stuff in the room and so the first thing I wanted to do was I wanted to tackle kind of the light area I wanted it to feel like my sketch my original thumbnail felt how we just she's sitting and there's this beam of light coming in and it's just like like when morning comes in and you step into the morning sun and it just has this great feeling. I don't know how to describe it. Um, that's why I draw pictures. Um, but yeah, so I wanted to create that. So that was kind of where I first started. So I'm going to turn all these layers off so I can walk you through why I made the decisions I made here. Because I feel like this was the most important. This okay, so. They say in art that it's like, I like to think of it as an 80-20 rule. I know 80-20s are everywhere. It's in marketing too. But 80% is just painting and rendering and getting it done. And that last 20% is just polish. And it feels like it shouldn't take that long. But to me, it always feels like it takes the longest and it changes the piece the most. And it when I look back on my art, it's the one thing I was missing when I was painting. I remember people would tell me, like, you're almost there. And I'd be like, what do you mean I'm almost there? Like, what does that mean? Well, I I think now, for me at least, it feels like it's that last 20% that takes the piece from just being rendered and looking okay to being finished. So, because, I mean, not everyone can say that. You know, no art piece is ever finished, which is okay, fine. Um, that's your opinion, but I think at some point you kind of got to be able to tell it like it's good and you want to start over <laughs> or don't want to start over. You just want to start on something new. So, so yeah, so we're here. And so I start going, all right, so let's start with the levels because I, I thought levels would make it darker. And then let's add some light in and desaturate because <laughs> y'all don't understand. Like, y'all think I go in. I, I don't know what y'all think, but I, I assume because my art's so saturated, people think I go in and I saturate it more. I actually desaturate my art. So <laughs> nowadays, like, I go in and I add an extra layer to take the color out. I am just, it's crazy. Um, so. And so I was trying to figure out, I was like, well, maybe it needs to be brighter. Because as you can see, I just darkened it to make it light, lighter. And um, I felt like she wasn't standing out either. So I was like, how can I make her stand out? So I darkened her. And then I'm like adding this vignette around. Um, and I forgot to paint the head of the door. I, I changed her proportions too head was a little big even though it, it's cartoony it just felt like she felt a little bobblehead heady to me and it, it's weird because it's only a 98 percent change like I, I shrunk her down to two like by two percent just really small amount but it to me it, it made so much of a difference um but and i was just along with the window here i was trying to make it so that her head, her face can pop out of this a bit more. And then I added a texture because I just felt like I just felt like it was too computer. So which comes with polishing the crap out of everything. And here I was I felt like I wanted to like level things out a bit I don't know how to describe it kind of like like 
gray it out and push it back so that because now we have we have like in this version we see off to the right we see um her hat and all the stuff on the bookshelf and the left we see all the flowers and we're still looking at that cat and um and so when i did this part and this is literally i think is a difference layer yeah of orange <laughs> um i was just kind of like all right so we're pushing those values a bit to where they're tonally kind of similar so that we can see her in the center because she's our focal point she's the the reason why people are invested in this piece, right? So I wanted to change her color too because she felt a little, I don't know, she felt a little yellow, I think, like, and and not like, a, like, she felt more like the color of the wood. And I'm like, well, she's a person. She's not going to be the color of the wood. So I gave her a bit more of an orangey tone. And then... So I was having issues with this bottom corner here, and that's kind of where most of the changes happened, um, was this bottom corner. Because down here, it just felt like when you entered the piece, so I'm going to draw like really quickly on here. So I wanted people's eyes. Obviously, this is the brightest spot here, so we're drawn right here. We're kind of looking at her. We're like, what she got? And then we're like, what's that? And then we're kind of moving around like this. But I felt like in this piece that with the floor the way that it is, we're, we're drawn here and we're drawn here. And then we're trapped here. Like, we can't leave here. Or I actually, I sent this to my sister and she had a very good, because sometimes I like to know what um, people who don't look at this every day feel like about it um, and don't do art every day because my sister's not an artist. Um, well, she is, but not full time. Um, so yeah, I asked her how she felt about it and she felt like she got trapped here as well, but also that all of the things on the sides just felt overwhelming. Like all of a sudden her eyes are overwhelmed and she doesn't know where to focus and so she just wants to leave. So she was immediately drawn into the piece because of this bright spot. But then she just wanted to leave because she just she just couldn't stay there. It just gave her just was overwhelming for her. And so with this like redo of adding all this extra bits and pieces um and extra lighting and kind of trying to get people to focus so now hopefully the focus is here on her but then we can kind of take some like stops and some breaks along the way and kind of like let's look around her house and kind of see what she's doing like all of this is really cool because it kind of tells the story about her and what she does on a daily basis but then it feels nice to come back to her and kind of what's she looking out at outside the window and just kind of this this feeling and it, it gave that feeling again that I wanted in the thumbnail of just like of just peaceful quiet and tranquil and so yeah so that is the very long process of of me and as you can see i i was trying to add more lighting here i was like well let's let's have some blue light maybe she has like a cool light coming in this way to kind of break up some of the purple but then it always came back to this i feel overwhelmed i feel distracted i just want to look at her i don't want to look at all this other junk unless i want to you know like but <laughs> um so yeah. Oh, so if you made it this far, uh, that's good. <laughs> I didn't think you would, because um, <laughs> that video is very long so far. Um, but I did want to update, and so I guess this is future Carrie. Woo. Um, that 
I looked again at this thing. I finished that mermaid piece. I got that out of the way. Oh my god, that felt so good because I've been wanting to like paint that since 2019, and it is, as everyone knows, it is 2020. So I am so happy to get that out of the way. And so I came back to this one, and oh god, this is like one of those things where, like, that's why you just sometimes need to say, like, it's done, just end it. But here I am, and I saw it, and I changed more things, <laughs> and mainly it was just that I I did like where it ended up. I just was unhappy with all this purple and this orange yellow, and I just looking on it with fresh eyes was just like God help it. And so, um, I went back through, and I added. <laughs> even more light <laughs> and I did my best to just kind of bring some of that purple down here I'll add a layer so I can draw and point at things because I have red red is a good color right actually okay whatever um so mostly in this area and then a little bit over in here I and especially this this was just so and her her stockings okay so that's a lot of red um but yeah so I took kind of these problematic areas and I I added a little bit more light over here um just to give it more of that vignette and um yeah I added more purple into these areas as well so I'm pretty happy with it now it feels much better even now I open the file to record this part of the video and I wanted to mess with it more and I'm just like oh boy so if it looks different from what I'm showing you in this video I'm not going to talk about it anymore <laughs> um anyways I hope y'all liked this video and thanks for getting through the whole thing because it's very long and I enjoyed making it I enjoyed walking through the process um if there's any questions just let me know and maybe I can talk about that uh, next time, make another one, I don't know. Or if it's boring, you know what, just tell me to fuck off and I will. Um, but yeah, so I hope everyone stays safe and I guess I'll see you next time. Bye.